so much for um, joining me into my channel and today I will be discussing uh, the um, continuation discussion about the water supply and distribution. I am going to discuss the section 605 until section 608. Section 605 is all about valves. A valve is a device or natural object that regulates, directs, or controls the flow of a fluid like gases, liquids, fluidized solids, or slurries by opening, closing, or partially obstructing various passageways. Valves are technically fittings but are usually discussed as a separate category. In an open valve, fluid flows in a direction from higher pressure to lower pressure. The word valve is derived from the word valva, it is a Latin, which is meant that the moving part of a door or in return from volvery to turn or rule. In section 605, it says that valves up to and including 51 millimeter in size shall be brass or other approved materials. Sizes over 51 millimeter may have cast iron or brass piece. Each gate valve shall be a full weight type with working part of non-corrosive or non-destructive materials. In section 605.2, a full weight gate valve controlling all outlets shall be installed on the discharge side of each water meter and on each unmetered water supply. Water supply piping supplying more than one building in any premise shall be equipped with a separate full weight gate valve to each building. So arrange that the water supply can be turned on or off to any individual or separate building, provided, however, the supply piping to a single family residence and building accessory thereto may be controlled by one gate valve. Such shut-off gate valves shall be accessible at all times. A full-way gate valve shall be installed on the discharge piping from water supply tanks at or near the tank. A full-way gate valve shall be installed on the cold water supply pipe to each water heater near the water heater. A full-way gate valve shall be installed for each apartment or dwelling occupied by more than one family. In addition to the main supply shot of valve for each apartment, individual shot of valve gate valves shall be provided for each fixture. In section 605.3, it says that a valve used to control two or more openings shall be full way get valve. So if a valve are used in a two two or more openings, it should be the kind of full-way gate valve. And in section 605.4, which is control gate valve shall be installed before each water supplied appliance slip joint supply pipings for non-metallic fixture and appliance. And in section 605.5, all required shut off or control valve shall be accessible in all buildings. And section 605.6, .6, a single control gate valve shall be installed in a water supply line ahead of autom automatic metering valve which supply a battery of fixture. And section 606, .6, which is a gravity supply tank. What is gravity supply tank? A gravity water tank is a water storage tank in which water is stored at atmospheric pressure and distributed by gravity flow in a down, down feed system. The tank is usually elevated above the roof of a building and is filled by a house pump. And here is the example of the gravity water tanks. In section 606.1, it says that elevated or gravity storage tank for potable water supply shall be tightly covered to keep out unauthorized person, dirt, and vermin. 
The covers of gravity tank shall be vented with a return vent vent pipe having an area are not less than the area of the down feed riser pipe. And the vent shall be screened with a fine corrosion resistant screen with openings not less than 14 nor more than 18 mess per 25 millimeter. And section 606.2 Potable water inlets to gravity tank shall be controlled by a float valve float switch or electric type water level control to prevent the tank from overflowing. And in section 606.3, gravity tank shall be provided with a valve drain pipe and an overflow pipe screened as described in subsection 606.1. In section 606, which is water pressure, pressure regulators, and pressure relief valves. A water pressure regulator, sometimes called a pressure reducing valve or PRV, is a specialized plumbing valve that reduces the water pressure coming into the home through the main water line. This valve brings down the pressure to safe level before the water reaches any plumbing fixtures inside the home. Too much water pressure can cause many plumbing problems, so it is very important to keep the water pressure under control. Although it is not necessary for every plumbing installation, a water pressure regulator can be essential in a situation where the municipal water supply enters the home at a very high pressure or where water pressure is irregular. In section 607.1, or it is, it is an inadequate water pressure. Whenever the water pressure in the main or other source of supply will not provide a water pressure of at least 130 kPa, after allowing fraction and other pressure losses, a hydronomatic pressure tank or an elevated tank and booster pump will provide said 103 kPa pressure. 607.2 Excessive Water Pressure where the local water pressure is in excess of 551 kPa, an approved type pressure regulator preceded by an adequately sized strainer shall be installed to reduce the pressure on the building side of the regulator to the required supply pressure. Approved regulators with integral bypasses are, access, are acceptable. Each such regulator and strainer shall be accessibly located and have the strainer readily accessibly for cleaning without removing the regulator or strainer body or disconnecting the supply piping. All pipe size determination shall be based on 80% of the reduced pressure when using Table 6-6. And here is the Table 6-6. 607.3 any water distributing system provided with a pressure regulating devices or chick valve at its source or any water system containing storage water heating equipment shall be provided with an approved listed adequately sized pressure relief valve with approved drain except for listed non-storage instantaneous heaters having an inside diameter of not more than 76 millimeter. In addition to the required pressure relief valve, an approved and listed expansion tank or other device designed for intermittent operation for thermal expansion control shall be installed whenever the building supply pressure is greater than the required relief valve. Pressure sitting or when any device is installed that prevent pressure relief through the building water supply. The tank or device shall be sized in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendation. Section 607.4 Each pressure relief valve shall be an approved automatic type with drain and each such relief valve shall be set at a pressure of not more than 1033 kPa. In section 607.5, it says that relief valves located inside a building shall be provided with drain 
adequately sized and not smaller than the relief valve after or galvanized steel, hard drawn copper piping and fitting, CPVC or PB with fittings, which will not reduce to the internal bore of the pipe or tubing, and shall extend from the valve to outside of the building with the end of, of the pipe not more than 0.6 meter nor less than 152 millimeter above the ground. And pointing downward, such drains may terminate at other approved location. No part of such drain pipe shall be trapped and the terminal end of the drain pipe shall not be threaded, not capped. Threaded, not capped. In section 607.6, any water heating device connected to a separate elevated or pressure type storage tank and having valves between said heater and tank shall be provided with an approved water pressure relief valve. In section 607.7, .7, nothing contained herein shall prevent the use of an approved combination temperature and pressure relief valve which is CT and PRV. Each such approved CT and PRV shall be installed on the water heating device in an approved location based on its listing requirements and the manufacturer's instructions. Each such CT and PRV shall be provided with a drain as required in subsection 607.5. And the last section will I, I'm going to discuss Section 608, it is all about installation, inspection, and testing. 608.1 Installation All water piping shall be adequately supported to the satisfaction of the administrative authority bird ends shall be rimmed to the full bore of the pipe or tube. All water service yard pipings shall be at least 0.3 meter of below the finished ground level. 608.2 Water pipes shall not be run or laid in the same trench as building sewer or storm drainage pipings constructed of clay or materials not approved for use within the buildings unless both of the following conditions are set or met. And in, and in section 608.2.1, the bottom of the water pipe of all points at all point shall is at least 0 0.3 meter above the top of the sewer or drain line. 608.2.2, the water pipe shall be placed on solid shelf excavated at one side of the common trench with a common clear horizontal distance between the side of at least 0 0.3 meter from the side of a sewer or drain line and the water line. And in 608.2.3, water pipe crossing sewer or drainage piping constructed of clay or materials not approved to, for use within a building shall be laid a minimum of 0.3 meter above the sewer or drain pipe. In 608.3, water piping installed within a building and in or under concrete floor slab resting on the ground shall be installed in accordance with the following requirements. First, ferrous piping shall have an outside protective coating of an approved materials machine applied and comforting or to recognize standard. Filled by climatic coating and wrapping shall provide equivalent protection and application is restricted to those short pipe length at point of connection with fittings necessarily stripped for threading and shunting. Zinc coating or galvanized shall not be deemed adequate outside protection for ferrous piping or fittings. Approved non-ferrous pipings such as plastic tubes and pipes need to be wrapped for rust proofing. And the second is copper tubing shall be installed without joint where possible, where joint are permitted. They shall be braced and fitting shall be wrought copper. Copper tubing shall be fully inter externally protected with bitomastic 
coating and fiberglass wrapping and installed inside a split rigid casing whenever installed underground. Note, for the purpose of the section within the building shall mean within the fixed limits of the building foundation. And the third is a plastic piping shall be installed in accordance with the appliance section found elsewhere of this code. In section 608.4, which is inspection, no water supply system or portion thereof shall be covered or concealed until it has been first inspected, tested, and approved. 608.5, which is testing, water piping shall be tested and approved as provided in section 501. And lastly, 608.6, Unions shall be installed in a water supply piping within 0.3 meter away from irregulating equipment, water heater, conditioning tank, and similar equipment which require removal for ser servicing or replacement. And that's all my report. Thank you.